G'day and welcome to Prop Maker. I'm Raf. This is the channel that helps you make stuff, repair stuff, and restore stuff. Today we're going to talk about my Jungle Lord pinball machine from 1981. I restored it last year, but since uh, I bought it, it's been missing a crucial, crucial part. We're going to fix that today on Prop Maker. Roll the thing. So what was actually missing? When I restored this, uh, well actually when I bought this, it actually had pretty much not much of its guts and there was a whole bunch of things missing anyway. I did fix many of those along the way, but the one thing that I couldn't fix was I was missing the back glass. So the back glass that's there is actually just printed from some artwork that I created from some photos that my good friend Kevin Helmer took for me of his back glass. I then cut and pasted it all back together and meshed it back together in Photoshop and printed it out on some A4 sheets, you see, A3 sheets, um, and then sticky taped it together and just stuck it there. Um, I put some coloured lights behind it to make it uh, a bit more rich in colour and for the most part it's done okay but as you can see if we get a bit closer you can see that there's seams down here and let's see if we can get out the glare seams and, and stuff down the middle here and across and there's crinkles in the paper and there's bits where it ripped um, and so all sorts of horrible stuff went on. Now, I've been searching high and low through the internet and, you know, watching eBay, hoping that someone would bring up a back glass. But because there was only 6,000 of these made back in 1981, um, which actually is quite a healthy number, not many of them have survived. And especially not many of the back glasses have survived because normally you would get some... Um, damage in the paintwork like you know peeling uh cracking and uh and not many of them have actually survived even some that i that have seen go past for very very expensive prices on ebay have had that problem where there's actually sections of uh the body on on uh, on jungle lord and his good woman um peeling off and you know people want to you know things like 700 american dollars for these so wasn't really interested in uh, purchasing one that was pretty damaged or pretty flaky and so it was always uh, the intention that i was going to probably try and go to bg resto or one of those companies and just buy a back glass i did look at the trans lights that are up on ebay and the ebay trans lights i don't know the the thumbnail just didn't look like it was the right colors and looked a bit um, overworked in Photoshop um, by someone who didn't really know how to use levels right. So wasn't really happy with that. When I created my artwork using Kevin's photos, um, I would take complete sections of, of these areas and actually replace them with my own textures within the image and try to get it right. The problem is that I had was mainly to do with things like lining up these windows and stuff to the displays. For the most part, I almost made it, but there's always some sort of uh, gap, you know, within, within these windows. So my artwork, just be all, purely by distortion from photography and meshing it around in uh, Photoshop, was always a bit hit and miss when it came to these windows. So that may be even actually, you know, basically cut out these rectangles altogether and actually uh, put in my uh, cut, put in the artwork that would normally be behind them um, and then recut the window out. So I would continue on the artwork that uh, the, the artist, the original artist, which I believe is Constantino. Yeah, Constantino created this artwork back in 1981 for Williams. And so I would continue on his artwork and actually try to replace what was actually behind those windows before they were cut out. Then I could cut the windows to wherever I wanted and it never really quite, 
landed exactly where I wanted. The other problem was that the back glass originally had around these outlines, uh, around the characters and around the windows, was all mirror. Which made it hard when Kevin was actually photographing the actual, um, his back glass, which wasn't original, with, with the mirror. Because I would actually keep seeing Kevin's actual hands and his camera in those mirrors. So I'd have to trace around those and then chop them, chop that outline completely out again and then replace it with a colour, which I did with, um, with blue. So it, it ended up looking okay, but still not quite the goods. There was still also some flaking on Kevin's uh, back glass. So there were areas where I had to completely replace textures and sections that were missing. Obviously also we didn't have, as you can see down flashing down here, I didn't have my back messages, the messages that shine through in a lamp, um, like you know when you hit things like tilt or when you get game over or hit higher score, those messages were lost because they're not on my photocopy unless I wanted to print a double-sided uh, copy and try and line that up which I actually did. Um, so I might actually um, still release that artwork for other people to start mucking around with and see if they can uh, correct it and make it right. Um, because it was better than nothing. This back glass actually, even though it's printed in paper, still looks pretty good. Um, it just doesn't look original. And that's where my friend Rusty came back uh, to, to help out because a couple of weeks ago, actually some months ago, he actually mentioned that he might have a lead on a new, well, a uh, a, a new old stock uh, back glass from a Jungle Lord, and thanks Jungle Lord, um, and he might be able to get hold of that. So. I waited and I kept chasing, chasing Russell, asking, you know, have you heard? Did you find? Did you see? Um, and apparently, yeah, no, he, he, he only um, was met with the fact that uh, the fellow went overseas and all sorts of stuff and I had to wait. Um, but it was a chance that there was one there, not sure, didn't really quite know whether it was going to come to fruition or not. And a couple of weeks ago, Russell rang me and actually said, hey, I think I might actually have some movement on the back glass. And sure enough, he came through and I got the back glass for a tidy, uh, modest sum, which I was very, very pleased with uh, because compared to those overseas prices on other, other back glasses that I've seen that which weren't very good, um, I was quite worried that I was going to be paying through the nose. But Rusty looked out for me and actually did some negotiating and actually got it to me for a pretty good sum. So I was pretty happy with that. And now I am the proud owner of a new, well, new old stock back glass. And as you can see, all the mirror is still there. There is no flaking at all and we're pretty pleased with what we have so that that's going to replace that so we're just going to take out this back glass now and i'm going to put that other one in and we're going to see how it looks now there are a couple of other things that i need to actually do to this uh, Jungle Lord before it's completely finished, but this goes pretty much to the point where it's 95% complete. The only other thing that's not right about this uh, this Jungle Lord is some of these plastics uh, down here on the playfield are actually broken, and some of them are actually missing the broken parts. So I have got a lead. I did actually purchase uh, the plastics only to be met by Marco um saying that that actually sold out on the time that my order went through so i missed out but uh, russell again pointed me to planetary pinball and so um i think that they've actually got uh, a set which i'm going to try and buy because that will actually just finish off the jungle lord completely um 
and uh, what I will do is while I've actually got this back glass off, I'm going to talk you through some stuff that I went through in creating uh, this restoration job or not creating, just restoring this, uh, this pinball machine back to its former glory. So first thing I'm going to do is rip off that glass, the old glass, which is just has paper behind it. All right, so here we go. We're going to actually take this old glass off. And as you can see, it's just basically paper. I will show you the back of what I did. So even some parts of it were ripped, but it was just paper. Um, things were uh, fairly dire. I just didn't want to have a pinball machine with just the back. Uh, the backboard showing as you can see it's all pretty boring if you just have that so anyway I'm just going to put this out of the way alright now I'm going to show you uh, some of the parts that I actually had to go through in restoring this jungle lord so you might notice if I take this door and open it, you can see that there's actually some boards completely missing in here. And you're wondering how is it working? Well, I replaced three of these boards. That's the sound board, the uh, MPU, and the driver board, which normally goes into making a, a Jungle Lord, complete with an actual speech board. Uh, so that's four if you think about it. Um, I replaced all of those with this little item here, which is called, actually, where are we? There. That's called an NW7. And an NW7 is uh, basically an all in one replacement board, which uh, I discovered, and I'll, I'll put a link in the uh, description to where I got these. Um, so this actually will do a number of different games and you can set it to those games depending on what dip switches you switch on and switch off so you get a, just these dip switches here you set them and they will choose what game uh, you're going to use now I um, I put the actual cheat sheet and glued that into the backboard here for me for future raft to actually understand what's going on so the handy guide here is that even all of the uh, basically the um, coloured wires of the plugs that go in here you can check against them and they are actually right so it's actually really really good um, so this is set to jungle lord so we look up jungle lord and we have our dip switch settings here and then we just set them down here so that was that's pretty pretty nice now the cool thing about this board as well is this board actually has another feature which other boards just don't and that is i can actually load this little uh sd card down here with my own sounds if i want to so i did actually trade some one sound which sounded like a space invader sound out of there the sound set of jungle lord and i never really liked it so I actually traded that sound for um, basically an elephant sound. So it's it sort of works, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the other thing that you can put on there is you can put on MP3s. Now, I'll probably do a bit of a better or more in-depth uh, review of this board because there are a couple of issues with it. But um, the main thing, though, is that you can actually place music on here. And if I just switch the machine um, on without holding in my start button, it will actually rotate through. Let's turn it off and back on. It'll actually rot rotate through uh, randomly some of these songs. So you can see just by turning it on, not touching anything, it will start a song at some point. Oh, no, it's not. It's actually starting some. <laughs> Let's try that again. Because it's actually, I put some sound effects on there as well so that the actual game could also play some, you know, some jungle sounds if it's, uh, if it's just sitting there in a track mode. So 
Hopefully this one will come up with a song. There we go. So this acts like a bit like a jukebox. You just don't have any control over the music that it's playing. So in order to actually um, turn that music off so it doesn't actually happen, you hold the button in down here, the, start, the um, credit button, and turn the uh, machine on and off and it won't actually start the music automatically. I'll just turn this off before I break copyright. So now that I've held the button in and until I heard that little um, uh, elephant go and then now it's not going to play the music. So anyway, that's the NW7 board. So on top of this board, I replaced the power supply board, which I didn't actually have. I didn't have any of the boards for this, uh, this machine at all. So I bought a power supply board. I believe I got it from Pinball PCB, but it's from Golf Pinball, this one. Um, and uh, it may not have been from Pinball PCB. I'll just have to check on that. I think Rusty actually helped uh, do a group order on this. So anyway, I got this and it's actually looking and acting very, very well. The only thing is I had to uh, create a plug to go from my transformer uh, yellows into um, the actual thing. So I had to actually create those plugs to go into the sockets that were on that board. The other thing that I did was down here is I added some, oh, let's just get the fuse box out of the way. I added some fuses into, uh, next to the bridge rectifier. And you can see there that I've got a little tip that Rusty gave me uh, while you're testing your, um, uh, your fuses. You can actually create a little uh, fuse um, breaker. So this is a breaker with an old blown fuse in, uh, in that um in that particular socket and if that tries to do anything bad it will actually trip this without me blowing sockets and going through loads and loads of <laughs> fuses so it will just i just get to press that button to reset it so it sort of becomes a circuit breaker at that point which is which is pretty good so i've actually <laughs> left it there i didn't bother changing it because i thought well um i was still well actually i forgot about it it was just actually sitting there so I will put a real fuse in that at some point. Um, the other thing is I, um, this was the original capacitor in it, which is uh, pretty amazing that it survived all this time. And it's basically, um, I don't think it's actually completely an original one, but it's, uh, it's one that was there when I, when I found the machine. So all good. Um, the only other things that I replaced on this were the mechanisms behind each of the flippers. So each of these flippers were completely, um, completely replaced with um, a full um, plate and plunger kit uh, and coil kit. All the coils pretty much throughout the whole machine have been replaced. All the diodes that were on those coils have been replaced. And I rebuilt um, the drop targets, which is this three drop targets here, there's three drop targets over here, and there's five up, up the back here. And it's, um, yeah, for the most part, that was a fun experience because some of those parts don't exist anymore and I had to fashion them as well. Um, and I'll probably go into that when I go into the time warp um, restoration and talk about drop targets there because there are some differences from 1979 to 1981. Um, Apart from that, I reworked the playfield. There were parts of this playfield that were worn, even worn right through so that artwork was actually missing. And I just ended up painting some more artwork, which just covered up these nice gouges. One day I will restore the playfield uh, by clear coating it and um, pulling it out of the machine, sort of dropping everything out, clear coating it, doing some, um, doing some, um, paint restoration work and then clear coating over the top over that. I do like the um, old look of this play field. I don't want to restore it with a hard top because even though hard tops look awesome, um, I do believe they probably changed a little bit of the um, character of, of the play. Um, 
and I don't mind that even that's that's fine but this play field is actually pretty good and if I want to do that that's my option for the next restoration in 10 years maybe I, I reckon we'll do a we'll do a hard top so I might even purchase one and just stick in the cupboard um, just in case um, hard tops are hard to come by in 10 years time um, anyway so without further ado I'm actually going to close this up and put the new my newfound glass down here into there and I'll see how it looks all right you're recording yep. so let's shut this door I'll put a little bit of wood here to Yeah, that's there. Now, make sure that we've got this all in shot. Are we all excited? Here we go. Yeah, this new back glass, yeah. It doesn't, uh, there are a few scratches and stuff in the paint, but really is no problems with this back glass at all. So, now I do have coloured LEDs, and these back glasses never had, number one, LEDs, but number two, they were never coloured. So we'll have to see whether I want to change them back to being, uh, you know, the set of standard white globes. But we'll see how it goes. And I might do an update later and do a comparison video on replacing them with just whites, with just cool whites, with just warm whites, and uh, with the, in, even the old incandescent bulbs and, and um, these coloured ones. And there we have it, people. Jungle Lord, complete with its own real, real back glass. It looks great. I'm just gonna give you a quick, quick clean. If I can find a cloth. Now, I probably should have cleaned it when it was actually out of the machine, but... Wow, those colours are really vibrant. <clears throat> wow, look at how much dirt came off that. That was filthy. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just giving it a proper, proper clean. Now, I could probably clean the back as well, but, you know, I just don't want to actually risk touching the back. It's so perfect the way it is. This is beautiful. So, Jungle Lord and his lovely lady in their total fineness. Even the Lit Up Williams logo, and I see the shine through. Game over is standing right here and it's flashing at me and I've never seen those messages, right? Actually never had a game on this machine where I actually saw any what those messages actually said. I knew what they actually meant, but those flashings of those areas, but uh, that's all I actually had to go on was where they were and what was probably there. So this one's saying game over. I'm pretty, pretty chuffed with the way my Jungle Lord has come out. One last thing is I actually, if you notice down here on the side, you, it looks pretty, um, uh, still pretty uh, old and ratty and I didn't restore the paint. And that's pretty much what I, the way I wanted it. So I actually just put literally seven coats of, uh, of clear over the top of uh, the sides. So that, um, this is completely sort of still holds its old patina but it's actually sealed um same with the the, the back the back box here you see all this paint's missing and even there was a big chip out of this um this area here I'm just flipping the camera so i can see it so a big chip here but i just clear cut it over the lot i just uh, left it there as a really thick coat and just kept putting more and more coats until it was um, uh, basically covering and filling up all the ridges then I sanded it back and one more coat and it was done so Jungle Lord 
looking absolutely fine in all of its glory. So, just jumping back now to a quick recap. Uh, this one's been a bit long for long-winded, but uh, anyway. So Jungle Lord, now complete. The next thing is to basically look at these plastics and see if I can actually get uh, these plastics replaced. Um, I sort of only will replace the ones that are broken, I reckon, though. So even if I have to buy a full set, I probably won't. I don't know. I've, what's your thoughts? Please leave your comment on in below on whether I should actually replace all of them at once, even the ones that aren't broken, or um, leave the ones that are there that are old, that aren't chipped. Um, the other thing is, uh, should I just leave it alone and not bother changing those at all? Anyway, it's up to you. Well, it's actually up to me, but I will listen to you. So please write your comments and I'll uh, take them into account. That'll be another video when we redo all the plastics. So all good. Next, uh, next videos, we'll be getting back to the old time warp, which is still in this sort of state, although... It's starting to look like a pinball shape now. So there's even some displays going on here. So things are uh, heating up on that front. Over there, we really got to get some clear onto this so I can do some color matching. Um, anyway, you've been watching Prop Maker. Please like and subscribe because it really will help me out. I'm just starting out on this thing. So please, please help if you can. Um, you've been watching Prop Maker. Roll the end thing. Thanks, Jungle Lord.